Hey, hello, and welcome to my view Data Graphics tutorial. My name is Takuma Nakata. I'm an interaction designer based in Kyoto. And in today's um, tutorial, I'm going to share a small tip and tricks on how to create this kind of visual. Uh, so I had an idea that I wanted to create something uh, like a voxel or visual using VVVV in real time, like audio reactive stuff. And then I realized, like, I couldn't get a decent amount of uh, boxes just by using uh, like the instancing and things like that. So I found out this trick works. And what I'm doing here is basically I'm using field trip, oh no, no, super physical, and then using the function called parallax occlusion mapping and applying some pixelated visual onto it. So you can actually control the like the lighting colors and things like that. and with the fun all the function like reflection and everything and these are all included in uh uh super physical so it's really the graphic looks really powerful but as you can see if you go to the side there they're par parallax occlusion mapping so yeah i think this technique is interesting so i wanted to share so yeah uh let's get started uh, so first of all uh if you haven't installed the uh, uh uh, oh, yes, I'm quitting here, new patch. And then if you haven't installed uh, Super Physical, you will need Super Physical to follow today's tutorial. So just put it in your uh, packs folder and then it should all work. Uh, and then once you have it installed, uh, there should be like packs. You just put it in a pack, Super Physical. And then I'll just open up the forward plus plus the, the example patch, sample patch. So. Yeah, just open this one up. Like this one, like this one, like this one. And then what you should get here is this. So this one is from the example patch. Uh, so here we go. Uh, yeah, I don't know why, but my computer has a problem with the light helper and things like that, but I'll just disable it because I don't need it. Uh, I don't need the constant instanced uh, boxes around, so I'll just delete that one, and I'll change this torus to a box because it's easier to see. So there is a box. I don't need the rotation, so I'll just turn off the LFO, Alt, right-click, uh, bring everything to default. So I'll try applying uh, that box of visual onto this guy for today. Okay, so what I did is I went inside material and here, I just full screen this one just for now. Here, there is this thing called parallax occlusion mapping. And this one is the most important one for today. So I just delete one, I wanna put it zero. So I'll right click here and then make it to default zero. Then right click here. So now parallax occlusion mapping is working. Fortunately, the texture that we have for it right now doesn't have any interesting uh, result for it, so we're not seeing anything. Uh, I'll just keep this right here. What we'll do is I'll just drag everything down, and then we'll be connecting different textures here. So the a little texture, and then the normal map, height map, and ref map. If you want, you can also add a metallic map and ambient occlusion map, but I, I would I wouldn't do that for today. So first of all, we'll just create a random uh, texture input. It could, could be an image or whatever. Just bring something that you want. I'll be using this liquid as I like it. I'll copy and delete. I put it here. Oh. And then I'll add a preview. So preview DX11 texture. So this one. And then I'll just have a preview just to see what kind of texture I'm getting. So I'll just put this guy here. So we're, we're gonna be adding this one as a texture. And then next of all, I wanna pixelate this. So I'll add a pixelate. I think pixelate is included, yeah, it's inside DX11. So if you haven't installed DX11, you would also need a DX11 pack. So I'll put this one here. And then again, I'll connect, reconnect the pixelate to, to the preview. And this should be the result you're getting right now. Right now, the boxes are too big. So I'll just put it down to something like point yeah three eight and then i'll connect this one to the pointer for the uh, albedo texture 
So as you can see, right now we've got a uh, this texture mapped on every boxes, but still we don't really see it being like height map pixelated. And that's because we haven't added the, the rest of the texture. So first of all, normal map. So I'll add a normal map texture, DX11 texture. So this one, normal map. And this one should also be included. Yeah, this was in the default. So I'll connect the pixelate to the normal map. And then I'll connect this normal map uh, to this one, normal map. As you can see, we already got a very interesting result, but this is not what we want. We still need to get a roughness map and the height map here. For the roughness map, uh, I'll connect a threshold. I just want to make it black and white, so threshold, and then I'll connect the pixelate to threshold. And then I'll just make sure that this threshold amount is out here. So, because I'm going to be changing this one. And then I'll connect this one to the head map. Here we go. So, we're already getting something very close, which is really cool. I'll also connect this threshold to the roughness map because both of these could be the same. So, we're getting really close. Uh, what I'll be doing here is I'll change the value for the threshold a little bit. Uh, we may be able to preview. So this is the threshold that we're getting right now. So I'll just search which size would be the decent scale. Oh, I forgot to do one thing. Uh, it's also better to, to specify the resolution for the for every text. Right now it's too small, so I'll use the default size. Use default size for all the texture effects that I got, so threshold, normal map, and then I'll higher up this one to like 1920, so then we get a smoother edge on it. Uh, so then let's try changing the threshold. Still not getting a decent visual. And one reason is because I think, uh, so I'll increase the uh, palm num samples. So this one is the slice amount for the uh, parallax occlusion mapping. So right now it's slicing to 12. I'll increase to like 60 so that I get more slices for the height. And then F height map scale, I'll decrease this one because right now it's getting too much height on it. So yeah, we're getting pretty close, but this is not what I want. Let's see what I could do. Changing the threshold doesn't really help. Am I getting a good color with the height map? Yes. Uh, so there should be problems somewhere. One thing that, oh, yeah, this one. Oh, yeah, this is it. So I forgot to turn on the subsurface scattering, and this helps a lot. Like, as you can see, it already looks pretty nice. So then I'll just try adjusting some values on pixelate and threshold. I don't like the fact that they're all too flat. So. I'll add some smooth on the threshold to make it a little bit smooth so that I get sort of like grayscaled areas as well. Uh, oh, I forgot default size has to be connected to the threshold and the normal map as well. Okay, this is the result. <laughs> okay, so I didn't really need to, to change the smooth, but if you want, you can of course change the smooth map. It makes it look a bit more interesting. So as you can see now, we got a really cool visual generated with super physical. And as you can see, it has the reflection and everything. Let's come back here. As you can see, the result now is a really nicely pixelated uh, visual. And this is what we wanted for today. So I think this is a really interesting technique in, in a way if you want to get this kind of like pixelated visual. And we can also like change the size of the pixelate by changing the size here. We go to low, then it's gonna be a bit hard to see the difference. But still, as you can see, it looks super rich. And if you increase the size of the parallax occlusion mapping, I don't know how much you can handle, but then we can get a really smooth voxelated height as well. So this is pretty cool, I think. And of course, it will the lighting and everything will be affected on this as well. So if you, for example, 
uh, want to tweak a little bit with the shadow and things like that, you can also change like the color here to make it more white or like red or yellow for the highlight. You can also change the direction of the light setup here, like change the pitch so that the highlight goes in a different position, things like that. I think you can also enable the shadow, uh, but I'm not going to do that one here. Diffuse color. Yeah, I want something like a black is cool, but I'll just keep it as white or maybe blue. Yeah, something like this. Blue was really cool. So yeah, this is what I wanted to share for today. Uh, I hope you liked it, and uh, I'm looking forward for you guys to create a visual using this technique. I think it's really really interesting. So that was it for today. Uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.